On the sixth floor of Raleigh's Holiday Inn yesterday, a maid discovered a briefcase which was thought to contain a bomb. That came just minutes before a man identified as the person who had earlier telephoned a bomb threat to the federal building just a few blocks away was arrested at the inn. Manager Jay Rohde tells WPTF News... He took the elevator to the sixth floor, deposited the briefcase under an ice machine, and then ran to the second floor where his car was. Raleigh Police Major Tom Justice fills in the blanks prior to the finding of that briefcase. There was a foot chase. The, uh, Mr. Shermer was spotted on Hillsborough Street, and he ran into the hotel, and uh, uh, he was taken into custody inside the hotel. That briefcase was subsequently lowered from the building by a rope and carried away by the bomb squad. As it turns out, it wasn't a bomb after all. Being held this morning is William Mark Scherner of Hendersonville. Police say he has a history of making bomb threats. WPTF News time is 7.32, and with the report on just how traffic's moving in and about the capital city this morning, here is Captain John Heller. Good morning, Bart. I'm over the south side of the city right now, northbound, and it looks like we've got a better pace prevailing this morning than we did at this time yesterday. Moving out of Garner on Highway 70, a bit of a crowd combines to form even a little bit more congestion as it moves through Tron Road on one change of that light. That's not too bad. Then Dodd clears a great deal as the traffic moves, splits about half and half down here moving some inbound on South Wilmington, some on South Saunders, both proceeding all the way into the downtown section with very, very short delays. I'm John Heller with the WPTF Traffic Watch. Prisons Director Ray McNamara resigned this week after saying her boss, Correction Secretary Aaron Johnson, lied to her about the dismissals of some high-level department employees. Governor Jim Martin says the whole thing was a setup. McNamara's resignation was to have been effective at the end of this month, but the governor, so miffed by the whole thing, has fired her. Effective immediately. Several hundred folks turned out for a school board hearing last night. Some Nightdale area parents expressed displeasure over plans to bus some students from there to Hunter School in Raleigh. They say it'll ruin the community and ask that the plan be changed. In Charlotte, an 18-month-old boy was attacked and killed by a pit bull terrier yesterday. Family members say that James Shirley apparently wandered into a neighbor's yard where that dog was chained. WPTF News time is now 7.34. Stand by for the weather. A lot of you probably are thinking about putting together your spring wardrobe, and that is a terrific idea because the new spring merchandise keeps coming in to J&J Apparel on Highway 222 in Kinley. Oh, it's easy to get there. They tell you sometimes it isn't so easy to get there, but it is very easy to get to J&J Apparel. If you'll take Highway 70 through Garner to Clayton, then turn left or head east on 42. For about 15 minutes, you'll run into Highway 222. Turn right, and there you are. And take a look at the new spring merchandise. They've got something there for everybody in the family. The kids, teenagers, adults, you big dudes, J&J. &J, and the prices are just spectacularly low. WPTF four-day forecast for the Triangle. Some morning cloudiness giving way to mostly sunny but breezy by this afternoon. High temperatures going to be at least in the low 60s. For tonight and tomorrow, clear sky, overnight low near 30, high tomorrow in the low 60s. Clouds will increase on Sunday, then it'll become fair on Monday. Right now in the Triangle, under cloudy sky, the temperature stands at 43 degrees. Stay in touch with WPTF, the Triangle's most trusted news. I'm Bart Rittner. Okay, watch out for evaporation. 25 minutes until 8 o'clock, WPTF, and it's sports time. The WPTF Sports Page, brought to you by Gardner's Barbecue, and here's Tony. Thank you very much, Mari. The NCAA tournament got underway at eight sites around the country yesterday, and North Carolina had a very scary first half in South Bend, Indiana. Middle Tennessee actually leading midway through the second half last night, but then Brad Darty and Joe Wolf decided to take charge. Darty scoring 14 of his 25 points in the second half, Wolf adding 16 of his 18. The Tar Heels pulled away from Middle Tennessee State last night to come up with that victory, 76 to 57. It was not without cost, though. Steve Hale suffered a shoulder separation during the game. He'll be out for the rest of the tournament. How Hale was fouled on a layup early in the second half. In other games around the country yesterday, the number one team and defending national champion Georgetown Hoyas getting off to a good start, a 68-43 win over Lehigh. A tough game, though, for Patrick Ewing. He says he had a lot of trouble getting inside. I wasn't able to get to the, as close to the basket as um, usual because, like I said, they were, you know, they're so small. When, once I got the ball, it, it seems like the whole the whole team would gravitate towards me. So um, 
I wasn't able to get as close to the basket as I normally would be able to. In other games in Hartford yesterday, number 17, Loyola of Chicago down Iona, 59-58. Temple over Virginia Tech, 60-57, to while the Mustangs of SMU down Old Dominion by an 85-68 to margin. Dave Bliss, the coach of the Mustangs, says they often play their best games when they're running. We're better in a, uh, a more up-and-down style. There's no doubt about that. Uh, sometimes our impatience hurts us a little bit, but I think that when we play against the team that will run with us, then uh, we're probably more confident. And uh, I think we played with a lot of confidence, especially in the second half today. Another up for an up-and-down season for the Mustangs. In the Midwest Regional at Tulsa, Oklahoma, down North Carolina A&T, 96-83. Don Corbett, the coach at A&T, says the Aggies just could not slow down the tempo. We wanted to control the tempo. We cut the lead down to uh, six or four points there early in the second half, and then uh, they got the ball down inside a couple of times and got some big plays out of them. North Carolina A&T on the losing side last night to Oklahoma. Louisiana Tech 78, Pittsburgh 54, Ohio State 75, Iowa State 64, and Illinois State over Southern Cal 58-55. In the southeastern regionals at South Bend, Kansas 49, Ohio University 38, Auburn 59, Purdue 58. Out west in Salt Lake City, the number three Redmond from St. John's, Louis Kondesenko with a new sweater yesterday. They beat Southern University 83-59, and Louis says it's always tough to play in your first NCAA game. You're playing for this your whole life, you want to get here, and you want to stay a while, too. Before you can stay, you got to get that first step in. And I think that's, that makes you anxious, that can get you a little uptight. In other Western games, a lot of Las Vegas over San Diego State, 85-80, Arkansas 63, Iowa 54, and revenge for Joby Hall and Kentucky 66-58 over Washington. We'll be back to look at the NIT and today's games right after this. Did you know Gardner's Barbecue on South Wilmington Street in Raleigh now has an all-you-can-eat seafood buffet on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights from 6 to 9? No! What's a barbecue place doing selling seafood? Hey, man, Gardner's Barbecue on South Wilmington Street used to be called Fosdick's, and they had the best seafood in Raleigh. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember Fosdick's. Well, the folks at Gardner's Barbecue owned and operated Fosdick's for 10 years, so they know how to fix seafood. They just decided last spring to change their name from Fosdick's to Gardner's. So, so Gardner's Barbecue on South Wilmington Street now has a seafood buffet? That's right. Every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night from 6 to 9, you can get fried filet of flounder, shrimp, oysters, shrimp creole, oyster dressing, clam chowder, a big variety of vegetables, fries, coleslaw, and hush puppies. All you can eat for only $7.99. All you can eat for just $7.99? Right. Now... That's the best seafood deal in Raleigh. Now, the best barbecue restaurant in town has the best seafood. Gardner's Barbecue, South Wilmington Street, Raleigh. Two ACC teams began play in the NIT last night. South Florida beat Wake Forest 77-66. Virginia Cavaliers, though, lucky a last-second shot beating West Virginia 56-55. Today in the NCAA, both Duke and North Carolina State in action. The Wolfpack taking on the Wolfpack of Nevada, Reno in Albuquerque. Jim Valvano looks at the other pack. Reno beat Vegas. They're coming off eight straight wins. They're a fine basketball team. They've got veterans. Meanwhile, tonight, Mike Krzyzewski and his Duke Blue Devils go up against Pepperdine. Now, Krzyzewski says preparing for the NCAA is never easy, but he's lucky. The Blue Devils are a very coachable team. Our team is, is, is a good group. They, uh, you can tell them why you're not doing certain things and what you need to improve, and they listen. I think that's why uh, we've performed so well after losses. Duke and North Carolina State headed into the NCAA today. We'll have complete coverage of the state game beginning at 1.30 this afternoon with the pregame show. Gary and Wally on and then the game at 2 o'clock. And our congratulations this morning to the 3A Apex girls. Winners last night over Weldon in the Eastern Regionals of the high school competition. They move on to play again on Saturday night at 7 p.m. against Wilson. Open end sports line tonight. We'll be glad to talk to you about this afternoon's game or whatever else you'd like to talk about in the world of sports. Tony Rixby, WPTF Sports.